Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here on Theme Between Your Blog Around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells and the host of Between Tomatoes on Orient Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Orient Neighborhood Television. Got a lot to talk about here this week here on the podcast here, but first, um, I'd like to give a special shout out to... Um, Indian Heaven, um, authentic Indian cuisine of Lake Orion, um, located on 1184 South Lapeer Road in Orion Township. Um, very good food to eat. I mean, like, great owner. I mean, the owner's great. I mean, like, the food is great there. So I recommend OA Nation and also within and people within the Lake Orion community to visit um, Indian Heaven, um, located on um, 1184 South Lapeer Road in Orion Township. It's right next to the Tropical Cuisine within the Lake Orion Plaza. So that's the shout-out of the week. Um, special shout-out to the good folks at Indian Heaven Restaurant. Went there on Friday. Um, very good food. Very, very, very good prices. Very great crew over there. Um, now let's go to our main stories here. Obviously, the um, you know, you look at the... Um, I mean, obviously, the week that was, um, we got a mess in the red now. The white's already pretty much wrapped up. The blue is down to three teams, and then the um, gold is pretty much wrapped up. Um, let's go to our main story here first, um, and that's what happened at Ferndale. Um, I guess what happened was, according to um, sources, um, there was a um, a safety concern over there at Ferndale. Um, you know, I guess... Um, you know, especially in a t- and this is the second time it's happened to Ferndale. I mean, like you know, where a safety issue, a safety concern has really impacted their um, playoff hopes and their um, league championship hopes, and you know, it affected them again. And this time around, you know, um, it was fourteen seven in favor of Avondale, and you know, the game ended up having to get postponed until the next day. Because somebody, you know, posted something online and, you know, and, you know, and every, in the, in, you know, it was a big, it was a safety issue. So the game ended up getting moved to Saturday at one o'clock with no fans. Um, luckily, the game had the live stream over at, at Avondale and the game ended up being 21 7 in favor of, um, of Avondale over Ferndale. And, you know, now you put Avondale in a really nice spot to, you know, to win the division. Now, yes, they still got to play Berkeley, but now they're in a great place to, you know, to um, control their own destiny within this division. They still got to play Royal Oak and they got to play, and they got to play Berkeley. So now they put them in a really tough spot. I mean, in a great situation to win the division. Um, you know, when I look at Ferndale, this is the second time it's happened to them. I mean, the Oak Park, um, they had this they had this happen when they went to Oak Park. Um when there was violence over there. And now you have this. So when I look at it, when I look at it, I mean like it's just it, it's. I feel bad for the players that this is the second time that they've had to go through this. Also, Coach Eric Royal, same thing. Second time he's had to go through this, and especially for a team that is battling for. I mean, last year it was battling for a playoff spot. This year, battling for a league championship, and this happened. This happened to him. It happened. So. You know, and we're in a we're in a culture now where um you know, if you post a threat, you know what I mean, it's gonna be taken seriously. You know, and it I mean like it ended up costing Ferndale a home game, you know, the rest of the the rest of the second half. I mean like I don't know how to describe it. It's just, you know, it, it's really, you know what I mean? It, but I was very thankful that they got to play the rest of the game, you know, but it was in Auburn Hills. 
So I know there's still an investigation going on. Um, so they're going to find it. They're going to find out who posted the threat. They're going to find out who did. And I hope they get caught. I hope they get caught. You know, there's, there's consequences for, for people's actions. And especially when you look at, you know, especially with the way threats are now taken. I mean, they're taken extremely seriously. So I, I just hope they get caught. I hope they get, in, they get in trouble. I mean, you know, so we're going to see what happens. I mean, we're going to see what happens. So it's really unfortunate what happened over there in, uh, at Ferndale. Um, haven't seen the game get postponed. And then, and then um, you know, having to, to play the game the next day in Auburn Hills. So, you know, so there's really, you know, so there's really no, I mean, like, really, like, um, for the person who posted that threat, shame on you. Because, you know, to put, to put, like, um, to put people's lives at risk, um, if you claim it's a joke, it's not. It is not a joke. You know, it is not a joke. And I hope they get persecuted within the law. So we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see that. But for but it caught, but it caused um, you know, an impact. It impacted the gold championship race, and you know, Avondale right now is in front of the of that division. And Ferndale right now sits at two and one. So, you know, so for Ferndale fans, you know what I mean? It's their second loss of the year. Hope's not lost for them. They still got, um, they got an interesting, they still got to play Pontiac Notre Dame prep on the schedule, which is going to be really interesting. But they're in a tough spot right now. They really are. So we'll see what happens there. Um, impact in there. So we'll see what happens. Um, the Battle of Woodward, recapping that game. You know, when I look at the Battle of Woodward, this game was as good as advertised because of several reasons. You look at Berkeley was coming up. Berkeley was improving each week. You kind of seen it after they, they won that game against Pontiac. And then you look at the um, Royal Oak. They looked really good in their win against Livonia Clarenceville. But, and their defense was much better. I mean, their defense really, you know, they allowed 19 against Oak Park. They only allowed seven last week against Livonia Clarenceville. And then this week they allowed 14 points. So, it ended up being a heck of a game. It was a tight game, 7-7 heading the fourth quarter. Berkeley found a way and got a touchdown. And then held Royal Oak, um, giving them back the um, Battle of Woodward Street sign um, for a 14-7 win for Berkeley on their newly made home field at Hurley. So when I look at, I think right now when I look at Berkeley, the way that they are right now, they're improving and they're getting better under first-year coach Casey Humes. They have started to put things together, which is a good sign. I mean, two and one their last three games. I mean, they were they're far better than they were weeks one and two. I mean, when they looked absolutely atrocious offensively against um Wall Lake Central, but that game needed overtime. They end up losing seven nothing. Then Troy Athens they lost that one twenty to nothing. <laughs> so when I look at the case there for Berkeley. They're getting better, but if they can make a statement, if they can knock off Avondale, that would be something. That would be something for their confidence. But we're going to see what happens. I mean, this weekend they play a very good Jackson Northwest team. They're known as the Mounties, which is going to be really interesting. It'll be really, really interesting how this one goes. It really would. On Royal Oak side, they got the defense. They got the defense figured out. They got, they got, I mean, this it just comes down to the offense. That's really what it comes down to for Coach um, Colin Campbell. It just comes down to the offense. They get their offense figured out. They're going to be fine. I mean, they got a tough one with Avondale coming up. They still got to play Pontiac. Um, so, when I look at Royal Oak, 
they're going to be fine. I mean, they found something, a defensive identity. They really did. I mean, so they're in the right, they're heading in the right direction right now. They really are. So we'll see how this one goes. Pontiac, they fell 19 6 to Bluefield Hills. Um, Pontiac has not been the same since their win against Detroit Frederick Douglass. And I think a lot of that's the depth, <laughs> the numbers. I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, like, you know what I mean? It's just they're struggling right now. They're struggling on both sides of the ball. For Bloomby Hills, it's their first win of the year. They've been playing better football. I mean, last two weeks, 33 points in two weeks, it's not bad. That's really not bad at all. So when I look at Bloomfield Hills, they might be starting to turn things around a little bit over there. I mean, they're getting things, they're figuring things out right now. I mean, <laughs> the, excuse me, schedule looks manageable for them. I mean, but for Bloomfield Hills, I really think right now they're starting to turn things around quickly. They're starting to turn things around. Offensively, they're getting better. <laughs> Defensively, I still don't know yet. I, I just still can't figure that out yet. So, we'll see how that one goes. From a playoff point perspective, right now, in this division, in the gold division, I think Avondale right now looks to be, they're looking really good in D3. Ferndale's an interesting one. Keep an eye on, on them in D2. Um, Pontiac's in D4. Um... Royal Oak and Berkeley both in D2. So when I look at when I look at it here, I, I really think right now, right now I would have to trust Avondale for sure would be a lock right now after week five with the way with their um their three wins. Um the two losses earlier in the year to Cedar Springs and um and Seaholm. I mean Seaholm right now is unbeaten right now. Um and Cedar Springs right now, I think they're sitting at three and two. I gotta look with with them, but I still gotta think when you look at when you look at with Cedar Springs. I mean, like that game right there that that could have gone either way, but still that loss has hurt Avondale. That real that one has hurt them because one, I think they're D five. I think Cedar Springs is D five, so that one hurts them. So. We're going to see what happens, but right now in this division, I still think Avon, it's Avondale right now. Then I'd say Ferndale, Berkeley, Royal Oak, then Pontiac. So that's my take right now in the division. Playoff point perspective, I think Avondale's looking okay right now. Ferndale, I got a little bit of concerns in D2. Um, Berkeley, I for Berkeley, I think they got to start winning some more games, I think. I think the loss to Wall Lake Central is killing them a little bit. Um, and also lost to Troy Athens. Um, both those two teams are really struggling right now. Royal Oak. Um, with them, you know, I mean, they had some, had that loss to Ferndale. Um, Livonia, Clarence, I don't know how many points they're going to get off of that win. But I know they've been struggling a little bit. And the Pontiac, we know they've been struggling. They're winning against Detroit Frederick Douglass. And I know they're sitting at one and four as well. So, you know, so right now, I would say right now, Pontiac, I say right now, Avondale right now is probably the best bet right now out of this division right now to possibly get in the postseason from this division. Um, let's go to the blue now. We already talked Wimpy Hills already. Um, Troy 31, Oak Park 6. I mean, wow. Wow. I mean, their defense was fantastic. Noah Ori played great. Jalen Peacock played well. They got a they had a pick six for a touchdown. I mean, where this is the Troy team that I really expected to see. You know, yes, people are gonna say, well, <laughs> you look at the Troy teams of the past and you've been really critical of Troy. Yes, I have been. But Playing Lake Orion and Pontiac Notre Dame prep is going to help them. 
because despite playing them, you know, playing them, it's going to help them down the road. And look where it's got them. I, th- I like where Troy's at right now. I really like where this team is at. Their defense is, is stellar. You look at, they got a quarterback in Noah Uri. Rushing attacks a little bit of a concern. Um, they got Jalen Peacock at wide receiver. Um, you got Lucas Tickling the lines. I mean, the two games against Lake Orion and Oregon Prep, you knew that were going to be losses. You knew they were going to be tough losses. But they battled in both those games. They really did. Um, Troy's got a good win. I mean, Troy right now sits really in an interesting spot. Three and two, three and zero on the red, or on the blue. Um, I really think when you look at at Troy, there's a lot to like with this team. There really is, <laughs> and the fact that they're in D one. You know, they still got to play Troy Athens. Um, They got to play North Farmington. I mean, they got to play Farmington. I mean, those are going to be interesting games for Troy. Um, And then on the other side for Oak Park, this one does hurt them. I mean, you know, when you look at Oak Park, you don't know what you're getting with them. You really don't know what you're getting with Oak Park because of, the situation, you know, because, you know, there was one couple weeks they looked really good. And then last two weeks, they haven't looked really good. They haven't been the same since the Seahome game where that was 28-18. So, you know, so you don't know what you're going to get with them. You really don't. Um, then the game of the other week was in this division. I'm North Farmington 14, Troy Athens 7. Um... You know, when I look at North Farmington, North Farmington, to me, looks like <laughs> they're, they're, they've come back from after their 0-2 start where they lost to Livoni Stevenson. And then for Ferndale, the North Farmington um, win for them is really helping them out because that is a big win for them at the time was when they went and beat them. Um, when they went, when Ferno went into went into Ron Holland and beat North Farmington. So when I look at this game, and you look at North Farmington the way they have, their defense has been playing outstanding. Their defense has played well. They played winning football. So when I look at the Raiders, you know, the la- ever since the the, um, the Farmington game. They've turned their they've turned their season around and they've become a big threat in this division. So when I look at North Farmington, they're right now a team that's that's peaking right now. They're on the rise up, but they still got a tough schedule. When you gotta play Adams, you still gotta play you still gotta play Troy. I mean, those are gonna be two really tough games for North Farmington. We'll see. And they got Oak Park this week, and we don't know what they are. We really don't. So, and then there's Troy Athens. I don't know what to say about this team. I I honestly don't. Because the last, I mean, when they beat Berkeley, you kind of thought maybe that this offense would work. Maybe this thing would work. But the defense has been a complete disaster for Coach Tom Cook's team. It really has. Now, they played better last week against North. But still, this defense is a mess. It really is. I mean, I can't explain to you how bad this defense has been. And, you know, the stat, if you want to look at it, why I'm saying they're bad right now. Look at the stats. The numbers don't lie. When you look at Troy Athens, the numbers don't lie. Then people are going to say, well, this is, they've been really struggling. But when you look at Athens, you have a football hungry principal there in Vernon Burden. Um, you have, I mean, like, and 
they're running a, a misdirection offense, which if you're trailing in games, it don't work because you're going to rely a lot on running the football. And there's going to be times where you're going to have to throw the ball and it takes you out of rhythm and out of system. But the defense has been the serious problem with Troy Atkins. It really has been. And it has to get fixed. Has to get fixed. Won't get any easier this week, though. Yeah, Clarkson coming up. If there's a team that's in a lot of trouble right now, this is it. Troy Athens is in a lot of trouble right now. And I'm wondering where Nathan Pickett's been. I'm wondering where he's been. So, I'm trying to figure that out. Really am. So, we'll see what happens for Coach Tom Cook's team. But daunting task awaits them this week. CO knocking off Farmington on the road, 14-6. Farnton started off hot early, getting a fumble return for a touchdown. But then Seaholm's defense really clamped down. They got a touchdown from Penn Roberts, running the veer. And then they got a nice pass play for a touchdown. And then it was a defensive game after that. See him at a goal line stand in that one. So kind of think about this with Seaholm as. You're sitting at 6-0 and right now. Actually, if take it back, you're sitting at 5-0 and right now. Clicking on all cylinders. You still got some big games ahead of you. You got to play Troy. You got Troy this week. You still got to play West Bloomfield. And then there's week 9 with Groves. So when I look at Seaholm, you're going to really have to judge him basically by the Troy game this week. They still got to play North Farmington on there. And then they got to play, um, and then you got to play West Bloomfield. And then Groves, they'll close out the year. Those, those are not going to be easy games. I mean, honestly, I could see all four of those games being losses. But I can also see them maybe going either three and one or two and two. I mean, there's a lot of concern right now when you look at West Bloomfield. And then there is concern when you look at, you know, you know, having to play Troy. Then you got to play North Farmington. I mean, then you got to play Groves, Yard Flowers, close out the year. They better have that veer going, you know, in, the, in those games starting this week. Because it's going to get tough from here. It really is. They got that win against Farmington. That's huge. But they're going to need more, especially from their offense going forward. Farmington, Julian Johnson out for the year. According to Rich over there at Farmington TV 10. Um, it's a big loss for them. It is a huge loss. Because now it puts pressure on their defense. Um, Anthony Bailey steps, has stepped in at quarterback. He's done a nice job for them. So, when I look at Farmington, their goals are still not lost. I mean, like, yes, their league hopes took a hit. But the postseason hopes are still there. It still is. You know, they got a manageable schedule coming up. I mean, they still got to play Lake Orion Week 8, which I think is going to be their difficult, most difficult game out of that whole schedule. The rest of the games look very manageable. So, when I look at Farmington... You know, if they go six and three, finish here six and three, that's a great year for them. Despite the injury to Julian Johnson. So we'll see what happens. We're gonna see what happens. So overall in the blue, I think right now, I think the best team has to be Seaholm. Then I would say I would put Troy right now over North. Um you know, I have North third, Farm to Force, um, Oak Park fifth. Olympia Hill 6, Troy Athens 7. That's frightening. That's frightening to me. That I have Troy Athens right now over Blue Bills. Not Blue Bills over Troy Athens. Because I did not expect Troy Athens to struggle like with where they're at right now. I did not expect it. And they are struggling right now. So, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens.
Postseason point wise, I I think Troy right now is peaking at the right time. If they can get by, um, if they, I mean, he he played Lake Orion, they played Notre Dame Prep. Um, those are going to help them going forward. Um, they have um, they got C home, which is a big opportunity for them coming up. Um, they got to play North Farmington, which is an opportunity game for them as well. So there's plenty of opportunities there for Troy to make some noise for C home. You got West Bloomfield there. You got um, Groves there. You got Troy. You got Troy there. So big game playoff point wise for Seaholm. Um, North Farmington. They also got an opportunity. So right now in this division, I still think right now three teams for sure. I would say from this division remain playoff teams: um, North Farmington, Seaholm, and Troy. Um, grow. I mean, like when I put um, Farmington might be on the outside looking in. Um, Oak Park is another team to keep an eye on, um, in D3. So they're actually in D2 because they went up, um, they asked to go up. So it'll be a tall order for Oak Park being in D2. So we'll see how that one goes. But right now in this division, I have to say for sure, three teams there, Oak Park, I mean, three, three teams for sure. I think a playoff locks right now in Seaholm. Um, Far North Farmington and um, Troy. So we'll see how that one goes going forward. There. Let's go to the to the um, white now. I mean, Groves basically locked up the division with the twenty eight twelve win against Harper Woods. Ryan Counts has really played well well for Groves at quarterback. There was a reason why that um, Coach Brennan Flurry called him Steady Eddie, and he has proven to be Steady Eddie. They've gotten production from Mario Lavasco. He had two touchdowns against Harper Woods. Um, and then, you know, obviously the play of Avery Guy. The defense has been very good for Groves. I mean, you really look at Groves right now. They're a well-oiled machine right now. They got competence. They got a swagger to them. I mean, this is a very dangerous team. Groves is a really dangerous team right now. And they got that win against West Bluebeal, which is huge for them. UD Jesuit's a big win for them. Um, you know, and then, of course, they knocked off Rochester. They've knocked off. I mean, Rochester, honestly, is their best win right now. And, you know, they still got to play. I mean, and they knocked off Stony Creek as well. But Rochester, honestly, is their best win right now. I mean, Harper Woods has really struggled. I think Harper Woods is not the same team without Nate Rochelle. They really isn't. And I'm not knocking on Dakota Garant. Um, he's been their starting quarterback. But honestly, he's not a starting quarterback. He's a wide receiver. But he's been forced to play the quarterback role for um, Coach um, Rob Oden. The defense has been the big problem for Harper Woods all year long. Now you look at what Harper Woods' situation D four. Now you gotta worry because coming into the year, you had a lot of expectation coming in. You, you coming off fresh off the D four state championship a year ago, you haven't produced. You have not produced. And when you look at Harper Woods going forward, you know there's some serious concerns here with Harper Woods. There's some serious concerns. So, we'll see. Um, I take that back on Rochester. The record right now stands at 2-3. and three. So, I do. I, I, I misspoke on that. I thought they were 3-2. and two, But um, they're right now at 2-3. and three. So, I did misspoke on that. But, back to Harper Woods. They've got to fix some things in quick. Because, yes, the schedule does lighten up. They got Pontiac on there. They got to play East English, Detroit East English Village Prep. I mean, but for Harper Woods, they've got to start winning now. They've got to start winning. And they got to hope Nate Washoe comes back. Because if he doesn't, they could be in some trouble. In some serious, serious trouble. So, we'll see how it goes. We really will with them. Southfield Arson Tech, 14 points in four league games. And three league games. 
125 to 14. That's rough. Including a 17 nothing loss to Stony Creek. I knew they would be down, but I didn't think they would be this down. Have not been the same team since the 46 nothing win against Flint Beecher. And Flint Beecher is 1 of 4. So, when I look at a and I, they're offensively, it's bad. 14 points in the last five, in the last four weeks. That's bad. That is bad. And then defensively, they're getting torched. Offensively, this team's still throwing pick sixes. A lot of them. I know they had a couple against Rochester. They had a couple against West Bloomfield. I mean, there's no words to describe this with a and Really isn't. Enough for Coach um, Chris McKenzie, or Keith McKenzie. It was going to be a challenge coming in. It's a very significant challenge now. Because now you got to hope you haven't lost your team. And by the looks of it, the numbers say something. The numbers say something. And I don't know how you explain it. I, I really don't know how you explain it. You, it's hard to explain. It really is. Rochester, as I mentioned, they're two and three. Had a tough 28-10 loss to Oxford. Um, you know, when I look at it here, last two weeks, 63-17. Last two weeks, now, albeit it's against Groves and Oxford, two very good teams. Rochester, they got a big one looming this week with Stoney. Playoff implications are on the line in that one. I mean, offensively, they've been solid, relying a lot on Jack Lauer. Defensively is where I think the big problem lies for Rochester. I mean, they have struggled at times defensively. I mean, they've got to get that fixed. Stony Creek is starting to turn the corner a little bit, sitting at two and three. Nice win against um against A and T seventeen nothing. Sam Fogler's been playing really well. Last two weeks, Stony Creek's been playing much better. Thirty eight points in two weeks, not bad, not bad. Defensively, you know they allowed twenty eight against Harper Woods. Albeit the final score was the last second touchdown. Shut they shut out A and T last week. So there's a lot of positive right now for Coach Rick Powell and his in the Cougars. But as I mentioned, they're in the same boat as Rochester. They really are. When it comes to playoff points. Same boat, same situation. We'll see how that works out. So we're all in the white. I think Groves right now has got it wrapped up. The sec second spot, I have to give the edge of Harper Woods, um, but just barely over Rochester. Then it's Stony Creek, and then a &T. So, playoff point perspective, Rochester and Stony Creek are battling for, for a postseason spot. Harper Woods looks to be okay in D4, but not real sure right now. When it, Not a safe bet, bet right now with Harper Woods. In D4. And then Groves obviously is a lock in D2. So, you know, so when you look at the playoff scenarios, I mean, like, four teams battling it out for um, a chance to get in the playoffs. Um, Harper Woods right now remains in danger. Um, Rochester and Stony Creek going to battle it out for a postseason spot this week. Um, and then Groves right now looks to be locked. Locked in right now. So, we'll see how that goes. Let's go to the red now. Of course, um, we mentioned Oxford's 28-10 win against Rochester. Um, Jack Hendricks, when he's not hurried and under pressure, when he's in control, good things happen for Oxford. Luke Johnson had three touchdowns. So, <laughs> Oxford's been rolling the last two weeks. They've been rolling. I mean, they've got confidence. Defense has been very good. Um, 
They have um, Luke Johnson's been playing great football. Jack Hendricks has been playing great football. I mean, the offensive line's played well. I mean, Coach Jack Lyons building something there. If there's one concern I have with Oxford, it's their defense. I mean, you look at the schedule coming up for them. They got to play Adams this week, West Bloomfield. Then they got to play Oak Park. And then they close out the year with Macomb, Dakota. Macomb, Dakota looks like the team to beat right now in the MAC Red. Now, a lot of people say, well, Utica Eisenhower's got that case as well. Yes, they do. But, you know, I'll be very curious when those two teams meet up. And Utica Eisenhower still got to go to Clarkson at the end of the year. Which, that could be really interesting. From a playoff point perspective for Oxford, they're more than fine. I mean, yes, they're at 49 right now. But the, the, the win against Lake Orion is huge for them right now. They played Eisenhower. They play, They had that win against Harper Woods. Um, they have that win against Rochester as well. But the Lake Orion one's, win for them is huge. And you have another op- you have an opportunity here with Adams. You have West Bloomfield. Now, West Bloomfield, they gotta, we're going to talk about them in a minute here. I mean, there's some serious concerns with the Lakers. Um, and then you look at Oak Park. You know, they're, a D, they're in D2, and then close out the year Macomb, Dakota, which I think if, if Macomb, Dakota comes in there undefeated to Oxford, that's a golden opportunity for um, Oxford. That really is. But the Cougars have to come in the Wildcat Stadium undefeated. It's almost the same similar situation with Celine. If Celine comes into Lake Orion undefeated, you know, it's a great opportunity for the Dragons. You know what I mean? Really great opportunity for them. And then, you know, hypothetically, if Eisenhower came into Clarkson undefeated, you know, that's a great opportunity for Clarkson. So, you know, a lot, a lot to be played for, you know, these next few weeks, especially with the Week 9 matchups coming up surrounding Lake Orion, Oxford, and Clarkston. Um, let's talk West Bloomfield here. Um, West Bloomfield, I've got serious concerns. I had a phone call with Tyler Keep at Civic Center TV. Um, on Sunday here, we talked about the matchup with Lake Orion, um, but we talked about what was going on with West Bloomfield. And a lot of the problems West Bloomfield has, some of it's on the field, some of it's off the field. A lot of it they can't control. Because you look at their record right now, they're at 2-3. and three, And their wins right now are Chippewa Valley and um, A&T. Both of them have a combined record of two and eight. Chippewa Valley, I think a lot of people were surprised to see. Um, considering, you know, yeah, they went with the coaching change, change of quarterback. They have not been the same team since. Um, you know, since Coach Scott Merchant left. But, you know, you look at the two wins they have, I mean, like, and then you look at other teams who have strength to schedule wins. I mean, like, you know, you look at, you know, you look at a Lake Orion who has a win against Northville, big win against Troy. Um, you know, Troy right now sits at three and two. Northville, yeah, they're two and three, but um, you know, they got two wins right now, and you know that that's a big effect there too. I mean, you look at Oxford. I mean, obviously, yeah, they got the Harper Woods win. The Rochester win's pretty good for them right now, and then the Lake Orion one's huge for them. For Lake Ori and the Adams win is huge for them. It just comes down to strength schedule. And you look at Adams, Adams, they got that win against Romeo. Then you look at the Rochester wins, good for them. Um, they got that Clarkson win that's also good for them as well. And then, you know, knocking off West Bloomfield. So West Bloomfield, this is a make or break week for them. It really is. Taking on Lake Ori in the swamp. Um there, I mean, like. There's a lot of question marks with West Bloomfield. There really is. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Lakers and Coach Jack Hilbert figures this out, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, they are really struggling. I mean, they are, I mean there's moments where they look really good, um, getting pick sixes, but there's so many questions. So I talked to Tyler Kipp about it, you know what I mean, and He'll have more information about that with West Bloomby. He'll have more information surrounding them. So I encourage you to watch Tippy Center TV 
um, when talking about the Lakers. So we'll see how that one goes. But West Bloomin, they got some serious concerns, especially playoff point wise. When I look at the Lakers, um, Clarkston, um, I, I did with them. They're looking really good right now. I mean, the Bowman Twins have played really well. Alex Wachenko has played well. Brady Beck has had Brady Beck had a nice game against West Bluefield. The only concern I have with Clarkson, there's a couple of them. There's their defense, um, but then which is certainly fixable. And then the other one is the playoff points. This is something they cannot control. Now, what helps them is that they got Lake Orion and Utica Eisenhower's on the schedule. The bad news is they got Troy Athens and um, Blue Bay Hills. Both of them at the combined record of 2-8. and eight. So, it'll be something to keep an eye on with Clarkson. It's the playoff points and the bonus points that both Troy Athens and Blue Bay Hills gets. Because that's going to obviously help Clarkson long run. It really will. So, we'll see how that one goes. But Clarkson right now, they're clicking on all cylinders. Even if I do criticize the... Um, the uniforms they have. Um, I still think the um, best jersey look they have is those grays. The whites, they've got to go. The whites have got to go. I am so... I cannot stand those their new white uniforms. They have got to at least send them to the JVs. My God. I mean... I, I'm not a fan of those jerseys that they have. So... And then you look at Lake Orion and Adams. That was 28-25 in favor of Lake Orion. Um, Sierra Hillback helps this team. Helps the Dragons big time. He had a nice game. I mean, Jamari Cooper had a nice game. Kyle England, I, th I thought, felt better. Um, Jaden Burrow had a touchdown. Jackie Vasquez had a touchdown. The problem with Lake Orion has is they've got a little bit of fumbleitis issues. They got to get that fixed. Um, when I look at them from a playoff point perspective, um, looking good right now. I mean, Troy is a big win for them. Adams, of course, was an unbeaten team coming in. Um, then they have that Northville win, which is huge. The Stony Creek win right now is looking good for them, despite you know the two the two um, Northville and Stony Creek being two and three right now. I still think they're going to get their um, records. Of, I think they're gonna I think they're gonna be fine. So when I look at Lake Orion opportunities await them right now, you look at they gotta play Celine, week nine, they gotta play Farmington, who's solid team. Week eight, Clarkson week seven, West Bloomfield this week. So that should be a really interesting matchup. For Adams, they lost Ryland Waters to a um to a foot injury. Um Unknown if he'll play this week against Oxford. Um, they do have a another proven quarterback, and um, I think it's London Ferris. Um, but he had a nice game against Lake Orion. Um, a lot on Mateo Humbert. You got Lazar Tillerson. Um, and they run the Veer offense. So, you know, for Adams right now, I think they're going to be fine. But they really need. Um, but if if um, <laughs> if Waters can't go, um, then Ferris is gonna have to be the one that does the job. So we'll see how Coach Tony Petrino handles this. Um, but from a playoff point perspective, I think they're still looking very good. Um, the Romeo win is helping them. You got Clarkston, West Bloomfield has helped them. Um. And then the Rochester win that's helped them right now. So when I look at Adams, they're gonna be they're in a good spot right now. Um, the schedule later on in the year could be really interesting. <laughs> they got Oxford this week. They got Stony Creek next week. Then they gotta play. Um, then they gotta play North Farmington, and then they close out the year with New Baltimore Anchor Bay. Now New Baltimore Anchor Bay, I don't know what's going on with them. I mean, like I know they're struggling a little bit. Um, everything that's been going on surrounding Mike Gioni. Um, and then you look at, and then of course, North Farmington, they've been getting better. Stony Creek's been getting better. Um, and then there's Oxford, of course. That's going to be an interesting matchup 
to say the least, you know what I mean, when those two teams play this week. So a lot to really look at when I look at um Adams, but they're gonna it, the red right now is basically a mess. It really is. Really is. I mean, like you really gotta look at okay, there's really no clear cut team right now in this division. I mean, you got all five teams, even West Bloomfield are very good teams. They got some issues. I mean, they're I mean they're they're good enough teams to do some damage. It wouldn't surprise me if all five teams make the playoffs. It is really it was really, really hard this week to rank the teams in the red because there's a lot of parity in this division. It really is when you look at that division. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. All right now we're gonna look at this week's games. This is week six of the um season here. Um Let's start with the gold games here. Um, we got Jackson Northwest at Berkeley. This is a Saturday game. This one's going to be interesting. The first ever meeting between these two teams. Of course, you have the Bears, and then you have the Mounties. Very interesting matchup. Um, this, I mean, Jackson Northwest has really been up and down. I mean, they look good against Coldwater. Um, then they lost. And then they lost, they lost two weeks ago, but then they bounced back. I think they knocked off Coldwater. So it'll be interesting to see how this one goes here. Um, it could be a low scoring game, but it might not. I mean, like obviously playing a Saturday game, it's going to be very interesting to see. Um, in this game here, I'm going to take Berkeley here because I like where the Bears are at. I think the Bears are playing a tougher conference. Um... Jackson Northwest has somehow started to turn their season around, which is good for them. But it'll be really interesting to see how this one goes. So I'm going to take the um, the Bears in this one over the Mounties. Um, it'll be a tight game, I think. It'll be really, really tight in that one. Um, then we have Ferndale at Pontiac. Um, Ferndale coming off that really difficult loss to um Avondale. Now they get to go back and they get to go to Pontiac and take on the Phoenix. Pontiac's been really been struggling. Um, in this matchup, I'm gonna take Ferndale because of the experience. Colin Hawk, he didn't look comfortable in the game against Avenel last week. I think a lot of that's because of Avenel's defense. Um, so in that one, I'm gonna take the Eagles over the Phoenix here. Um, I don't, this could be a route. I I don't know yet. So we'll see how that one goes there. Um, then we have Avondale taking on Royal Oak at, um, over in Auburn Hills. Um, I, I think this matchup here, I think Avondale is going to win this pretty handily. Um, the defense has looked really good. Now, Royal Oak's defense is not bad either. I mean, this could be a low scoring game. I mean, it's possible because both defenses have played really good football. I mean, but I just think Avondale just got enough offense, I think, to find a way and win this game. I think Justin Gers Sykes is a big game here. Um, so I'm going to take Avondale here in this one. Um, it will not be an easy one. That is for sure. Um, and then we go to the blue. I mean, then we go to the blue. I mean, the blue, it'll be really interesting to see how um, how um, that goes. Um, I think it'll be very interesting to see um, how that one goes. Um, so when I, um, you look at the blue matchups, you look at, obviously you got Bloomfield Hills taking on Farmington. Um, it's going to be really, really interesting to see how, um, that one goes. I really think in this one, you got to go with, um, Farmington here over Bloomfield Hills. You really got to go with them here. So that'll be interesting to see how it goes. Um, and I think it'll be. It'll be really interesting to see how um that one goes. And then you have um and then you have you know Troy Athens taking on um Clarkson. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> I, I just don't see how Troy Athens can knock out Clarkson. I, I just don't. I mean, they're gonna have to keep the ball away from Clarkson's offense. That's the only chance they have. In this game, I mean, it's going to be a tall order for sure in this one. So, 
I'm going to take Clarkson in this one. It will not be an easy game for sure there. Um, then you have um, then you have North Farmington at Oak Park. Um, North Farmington right now is red hot right now. Oak Park's coming off a really tough loss to um, Troy. Um, so when I look at this matchup here, I'm going to take the um, I'm going to take the Raiders in this one in Night Valley. I think it's going to be tough. It's going to be closer than the, in the score indicates. So I'm going to go take the um, I'm going to take the um, I'm going to take the Raiders in this one over the over the um, Knights here in this one. So we'll see how that one goes. And then the last game in the blue we got is C. It's Troy at C. Home. Um, this is going to be really interesting to see how this one goes. Um, I think it'll be really interesting to see how this. I, I just think it'll be interesting to see because Troy's been red hot lately. C. Home runs severe. I mean, it'll be very interesting to see how this one pans out. I mean, C Troy lost to Seaholm a couple of years ago. I know that Seaholm's had their number, but this could be the year Troy gets him. I really think this could be the year that they get him. So I'm going to take Troy here in an upset. I'm going to take Troy to shock Seaholm here in the Maple Forest. I think this is a different Troy team. I think playing Lake Horry Nord in prep is going to help them. So we'll see how this one goes. So I'm going to take the, um, I'm going to take the, um, the Colts here over the Maples here in this matchup. So, let's see how this one goes. Um, and then we have the White. Um, we have the White here. We got Groves taking on South Lion. Um, South Lion's 3-2 and two coming in this game. So, this should be really interesting to see how this one goes. Um, I think that... Um, I think Troy's got a shot. I, I think Groves... I think Groves goes in and dominates South Lion. Um, I think the Falcons got a great chance here to um, make some noise, and I think they're going to go in and win pretty handily over South Lion um, in that matchup. A&T and Harper Woods. I mean, you look at A&T, um, really struggling right now. Harper Woods right now has also been struggling as well. So we'll see what happens here in this one, but I got Harper Woods winning this one over the Warriors, um, over in Wayne County. So, I think it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. But, Harper Woods right now, without Nate Washlow, has really had things rough. a t we know, has been, really been struggling. So, we'll see how that one goes. But I just think at the end of the day, I, I like Harper Woods in this one to knock off a t So, that'll be something to really really keep an eye on going forward there. And then last but not least we got in this division we got Rochester and Stony Creek. These two know each other quite well. I mean last season Stony Creek went into Rochester and won 35-7. Now Stony Creek's got a new coach and Rick Powell taking over that program. For Stony Creek it kind of starts that city rivalry um battle cuz they got Rochester this week then they got to play Adams next week. Um, so you really look at it here. I mean, it's a big week for Stony Creek. Rochester's got a good running back in Jack Lauer. Um, Stony Creek just got Peyton Rumbler back. That's a big deal to a lot to help alongside Spencer Beekman. Um, the offensive line, the defensive line, it looks like that's going to be solved over there at Stony Creek. And then you have Sam Fogler at running back. So when I look at this matchup here, I think it's going to be interesting to see. Um, I think it's going to come down to is can um, I think it's going to come down to is can Stony Creek, you know, find that deep threat. If they can find that deep threat and expose Rochester there, I think it could be a long night for Rochester. So, but I think Stony Creek experience playing in the red last year, I think it's going to help them here. Um, having Coach Rick Powell there. I think Stony Creek's turned things around. They put put a little bit of veer into their offense. Um, I really like Stony Creek in this one to knock off Rochester. Um, it'll be a tight game. I think it'll be a close game, but I just think Stony Creek will um, find a way 
and I think they're going to beat Rochester. Um, it was gonna it's gonna be tight, but it and also they're at home too. So, so I got the Cougars in this one winning over the Falcons. Um, so but it'll be a heck of a game between those two teams. <laughs> and then you look at the red games. I mean, like you look at um the two red games here. Um, Clarkson of course taking on Troy Athens. We were talking about that earlier. Um, then you look at. Lake Orion and West Bloomfield. Um, my goodness, this is a big, big game for West Bloomfield. Playoff points, competence. I mean, there is a lot on the line for the Lakers in this game. For the Dragons, you know, you got to look at it and approach it like a business trip. <laughs> you just got your quarterback back in Tierra Hill. Your running game is been really good. <laughs> Your defense has been okay. I mean, like, 46 points allowed in two weeks. Still not good, but not great either. So, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. But, in this one here, um, but in this one here, last year's game was a classic. Lake Orion won that one 17-13 behind a Jamari Cooper touchdown. Um, I think T.R. Hill has a big one, big game here this week against West Bloomfield, and I think Lake Orion's experience plays a big role in this game. West Bloomfield, they're going to do everything they can. I expect this game could be an offensive shootout between these two teams. I mean, West Bloomfield, obviously, with Jamal Shakespeare and Bo Jackson, um, you know, they've got to set on a quarterback. They, they got to. If not, you know what I mean? They're in some trouble. And... You know, and I really think Lake Orion's going to have their way with West Bloomfield's defense. West Bloomfield, they got a good, great rushing attack in Josh Tate. Um, Brody Pickard's back. Um, they've got um, Jaden Alos there as well. So, I expect it to be a great game. I expect it to be a great game of two teams going at it. I've got Lake Orion winning this one. It'll be a high-scoring game. Um, it'll, be, it'll be very interesting to see here. You know, considering what would happen to West Bloomfield if they lost this game to Lake Orion. Um, but I got the Dragons in this one here. It'll be a really tight game. It always is when Lake Orion and West Bloomfield play. I mean, like it's it's always a class between these two teams. And then last but not least, we got Adams at Oxford. Um, <laughs> when I look at this game here, how will Adams handle life without Ryland Waters at quarterback? Will he come back this week? I don't know. But, you know, they got a quarterback in Mr. Ferris who can, you know, who has really played well for Adams. Um, they still have Mateo Humbert. They got Lancho Tillerson. Their offensive line is solid. And they run the veer. So, taking on an Oxford team with Jack Hendricks, Luke Johnson, um, you know, and they got um, Dean Rice who's really played well for them. So when I look at this game here on paper, you really think, okay, without Waters, Oxford wins this game. Yes or no? <laughs> Adams has proven they can win without Waters. And, you know, obviously Waters is a big part of their offense. Oxford, we know, has traditionally been a team that likes to start fast and then hold on late. Adams, when they play that veer, you're not going to see the ball on offense. You know, so when I look at this game here, if Adams plays that time possession game, that could be a big problem for Oxford. Um, if Oxford can play the same way, that could be a problem for Adams. So I think this is a tight game. I think it's going to be a really, really tight game. I'm going to go Adams in this one because I think Adams, with their experience, now Oxford's got a ton of experience themselves, but I think it's going to be a tight game. Um... Uh, it might be a three-point game, so we'll see how that one goes, but I just think Adams will find a way to win this one in a really hard-fought game against Oxford. So we'll see what happens going forward um, in that one. So a lot to really look at heading forward for that game between Adams and Oxford in that one. All right, everybody, uh, before I sign off here, make sure you follow the blog. At, um, we have the um, soccer district previews are up on the blog at Saturday for this 50 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OA. Um, yeah, I also had the um, analysts from History Now 
host Anthony Termina on here. Um, reminder again, everybody, send a special shout out to Indian Heaven Restaurant in Lake Orion on um, 1184 South Lapeer Road in the Lake Orion Plaza. Um, recommend Lake Orion, um, the community of Lake Orion, and also OA Nation to to come to this restaurant. I mean, it's really good food. Um, I took my mom to um, Indian Heaven. Um, really good food. I mean, like great chicken there. They got great rice. I mean, like, I mean, like really good, really great place. Owner's great. So shout out to, um, Indian heaven restaurant of, um, Lake Orion. Um, recommend, um, a lot, recommend everybody to, um, to, um, go, um, to go and attend this, um, great restaurant in the Lake Orion Plaza. Everybody want to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Stangle Bay, put it at blogspot.com. For latest information around the OA, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week. Take care. And I'll see you then. God bless. God bless.